Hi, welcome back to my channel. Some of you know that I was a lawyer for many years and at the age of 37 I finally managed to teach myself to code. Eventually I even joined Google as an engineer. But what many of you don't know is that I tried and failed to teach myself to code at least three times over three different years. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the top reasons why I did not succeed the first few times I tried to teach myself to code. And believe me, those reasons are probably not what you're thinking. And then I'll also, if you stick around to the end, share with you all the things that had to change for me to actually succeed in my effort to learn to code. Hello there! Welcome to my channel. Listen, after more than 12 years as a lawyer, I tried to start my own company. It was a startup and I was a non-technical founder. Sure, we managed to get a product to market, but you know what, I had a horrible time finding technical co-founders. In fact, I found a couple, but they ended up leaving. I was so sick of it. At the age of 37, I finally taught myself to code. Man, it wasn't easy. A year or so later, I ended up joining a startup as an engineer. And a year after that, I joined Google as an engineer. So listen, if you want to transition your career into tech, or you want to become your own technical co-founder, subscribe to my channel. So reason number one why I failed was I did not have a well-developed plan. In fact, I did not even understand how important a well-formed plan would be. Now, a plan is something that we all talk about all the time, and to be honest, it's a lot easier to talk about than it is actually to build a good plan. A good plan is one that has several ingredients, and a good coding plan must have all of these ingredients for it to be successful. Now in my case, in hindsight, I've concluded that a good plan will have the following four ingredients. One is clarity on your goal or clarity of purpose. You need to really understand what your coding goal is. And that is not just about the kind of code you want to learn or the kind of language or framework. Those are actually tactics, but you need to have a strategic goal. Why are you learning these subjects? Why are you learning that language? Or why is this framework important? For that, you really need to have a clear strategic goal, the kind of job you want to do, the kind of outcome you want, the kind of work or the kind of salary you want. All of these are your strategic goals and the actual choice of language or framework, those are kind of tactical goals. So the first thing you do need in a good plan is clear goals. The second thing you need is clear expectations. Now, most people think that hopes and desires are the same as expectations. They're not really. Expectations is more information driven. So you need to expect things of yourself. You need to expect circumstances around you to be a certain way. You need to expect the learning journey to be a certain way. These are your expectations. So having the right expectations of yourself, of the circumstances and environment that you're in, and also the experience and the process of teaching yourself to code is absolutely essential for a good plan because with the wrong expectations, your plan starts to fall to pieces. The next important component in a good plan is that you need to develop a series of steps or a system, if you like, that is quite unique to you. This is basically a series of steps or sequences that you follow in your life, practices, disciplines, whatever you want to call them, that work for you. And because they're specific to you, it requires that you are self-aware enough to know what actually works for you. And so you need to design the process or the system or work with somebody who can help you design that system or process that works for you, that gets you results. And that's the key indicator of a system or a process that works. It gets you the results you want. But for that, you need to have the right expectations. Expecting to run a marathon with one day training is the wrong expectations. But a system or a process that teaches you how to practice your running every day, extend your range, duration and stamina is the system or process that will eventually get you to the successful outcome you want, provided you have the right expectations of yourself, your environment and your goals. Now the final or the fourth component of a good effective plan is to understand what resources you need to use and the ones that you need to use are always the ones that get you the results. There is no point using resources that other people recommend if you don't find them useful for yourself, no matter what other people say. This personally was a very difficult experience for me to go through because everyone seemed to be learning from blogs and everyone seemed to be learning from you know the, the code academies of the world or the course era certifications were everywhere, but none of them actually worked for me. 
the system that I followed ended up being quite different. And in fact, even today, I now realize that I'm weaker at reading documentation than I am at reading other people's code or even watching somebody else reason through a problem is a better way for me to learn about the API, the problem, the algorithm, than it is for me to just read documentation. That's just the way I learn. And now I play to that strength. Now, the third reason why I did not succeed when I was teaching myself to code for several years was because I over relied on free material. Now I get it, free material is the best thing since sliced bread. I get it. The internet is a wonderful way to teach yourself all sorts of skills for free, no question about it. But I truly believe that free is best when you're revising something, researching something, or practicing something. If you're actually learning completely from scratch, and it is a fairly complex skill with a lot of material to cover, then it's not really free. And the reason is you're still paying in time. Now, when you do something with free resources, unless it's a very carefully curated list, you are going to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out things like, what should I learn? How much is enough? Do I need to look at that shiny topic or not? I know I tripped myself up for months wondering whether I needed to learn that language, that framework, this sort of SQL, all sorts of questions. Right? But it turns out that you don't need all of these things. You need some of these things, maybe none of these things, but you need a minimum amount of topics to be covered, a minimum effective dose, if you like, of subjects that you need to be good at in order to get your first job as a developer. And that choice of subjects depends entirely on what your goals are. So while free is great, free does come at a cost, which is your time. Now, when you think about it, this makes perfect sense. Universities are three year or two year or one year programs, depending on what you're doing. Boot camps too are fixed time. So at the end of that, everybody who's finished that program has the same baseline level of knowledge, give or take. But why is it that that's not the case when you're self-taught, when you're relying on free resources? There is no baseline knowledge that five people who are self-taught end up having at the end of three months. And that's because they're spending time in very different ways or in different subjects. Me, I really struggled with this because I started to learn a little bit about a lot of things, but not a lot about anything. And as a result, I went really broad, very superficially, but didn't know enough of anything to be effective, to be able to even build a simple website. It is only when I started to go deep on the subjects that were relevant to my goals that I started to make progress, but I could only do that later on when I had a little bit of help. So the problem with free information is that it does actually cost you a ton of time. The alternative is to pay for a boot camp or a university, but that costs you a lot of money. Now, I believe there should be a halfway house in between where you're self-taught, you're working after work or you're studying after work and you're maintaining your job. So you continue your income source, but you need to pay a little bit of money here and there for the right mentor or the right coach for the right guidance that is specific to your goal. So having said that, what is it that changed for me? How is it that I went from not knowing how to code, struggling to learn for many, many years, failing to actually then succeeding in learning to code and eventually even getting a job at Google as an engineer? Well, what happened was this. By this time in my life, I'd actually learned how to learn quite well. Remember how I said that that meta skill is important? Well, I'd done that for a number of things in my professional life, both while I was doing work as a lawyer, but also in my life in the commercial and product space. Then when I was in my own startup, I had to teach myself a bunch of things. In fact, I taught myself to play the guitar when I was a teenager, and even that meta skill really, really helped. I really understood what I needed to do in order to learn something. But the question is, what subjects do I need to focus on? Well, for that, I ended up getting myself a mentor. Now, to be clear, this mentor was technical. He was a software engineer at a startup. It was his startup, and he was a career changer too. But he had never actually been in a situation where he was in the job market actively looking, not as an engineer anywhere. As an engineer, he started his own startup, and before that, he was freelancing with friends, building small web applications for them. But he was incredibly helpful when it came to questions like, well, what, what subjects do I want to focus on? What languages? Well, you know, map to your goals, okay? And how much time do you think this topic should take? Great, he gave me a set of fair expectations. Remember how we talked about expectations? 
Well, he gave me reasonable expectations of how long something would take. So I didn't think I was dumb or I didn't think I was really smart for doing it early. I probably thought, hang on, there's something I missed there. And then the other thing that he really helped me with was to help me get unstuck. Now getting stuck and blocked while coding is the most normal thing and I would argue it never goes away. No matter how good you get, no matter how far along in your career you go, there will be times when you get stuck. So the ability to get unstuck or to ask somebody else for help to see you through a problem, to see you through a blockage is hugely helpful. Most people quit because they don't have someone around them who can help unblock them. So this person played that role for me. And over time, and with a little bit of money to sort of compensate them for their time, I was able to make incredible amounts of progress. But he was not the person who taught me how to approach the job market. In fact, for that, I've never actually used a coach. And the reason is, I happen to have that experience myself. I was in two industries in three different countries over the course of my career before I even started to teach myself to code. And in that time, I was both on the hiring side and on the applicant side. So I have a fairly good grasp of how the job market works, how applicants think, how hiring managers think, how HR approaches things, how recruiters approach things, and so on. I understand the dynamics of a job market, but this was a hard-earned skill over 16 years of being in various industries. So for me, I didn't need that kind of guidance or mentoring, but I definitely need it on how to teach myself to code. I combined all this with my ability to learn how to learn, and Bob's your uncle. I was able to get myself a role six weeks after I finished teaching myself to code. And when I say finished, I had set a certain specific set of goals and outcomes and I finished that. By no means was I an expert. I wouldn't even say I was very good. I was just good enough. Now this brings me to a really, really important point. Because we're so accustomed to free information, we forget that we're paying in time. This is another thing I did differently. Because I paid for the right set of coaching help or the right set of courses at the right time, what I was able to do was I was able to save time at the other end. Even though I paid in cash now, I was actually saving cash in the long term. And this is what I mean. Because of the combination of skills, paid guidance and free guidance I got in my journey to learn to code, I was able to get myself a job in six weeks. I know a lot of people in a similar position were taking three months, six months, and even nine months to get their first coding job. Now think about it this way. If I spent $5,000 for extra information and coaching, and I got myself a job two months before somebody else got themselves a job, I have two months of extra salary. And two months of extra salary needs to be more than $5,000, which is how much I paid for all my coaching and education and mentoring. If it's more than that, I've made my money back, right? So there's no point doing free stuff if you're going to spend nine months in the job market because you could have lost out in three months, six months of income. But if you pay a little bit of money and you're fairly confident that you're going to get that money back at some point in time in the near future, then it's totally worthwhile as an investment because chances are the kind of money you're going to spend is going to be a lot less than your monthly salary. And so that's how you need to start thinking about your resources. Your two biggest resources are your time and your money. I think a third resource that's really important is your energy. The more energy you spend and the more time you spend in the market without getting the results you want, the more discouraged you're going to get. And there's no amount of money you save them that's actually going to help you. So sometimes it's better to balance the free information with paid assistance or coaching or guidance or education, whether it's a boot camp, a coach, a university, whatever is within your means. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make is a key ingredient for success is learning to invest in yourself, whether it's time, money, or a combination of the two. I'm going to have a completely different video on how to invest in yourself and how to think about time and money. But for now, let me show you that that thinking was critical in the eventual success I got in teaching myself to code. I had to treat myself as an investment. Now, I know we've covered a whole lot in this video. I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you agree, disagree, if you have another point of view or an experience to share, a question to ask, a doubt that you want clarified, I'm here for you. Put your comments in the video and I will get back to you. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what? If you know somebody else who's also trying to teach themselves to code, whether they want to become their own technical co-founder or a professional engineer, whatever it is, just share this video with them. Let other people realize that it's possible for them. And hey, maybe they'll be your study buddy. So don't forget, like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.